If you're looking for a swinging superhero who's into action and adventure, Spider-Man is a great catch. Looks like I got here just in time. He's a swinging single who likes to travel, is good with pets, likes to dress up, and is looking for a serious commitment. <gasps> I'm a superhero, remember? So make a date with Spider-Man. Season premieres Monday with all new episodes on Fridays. Hey everybody, I'm Steve. And I'm Mike. And together when we take our magic ambulance that we got given to long ago in a cave by a magic shaman old man, we put them together and we become too old, old for, for comics. comics! Yes, this is us. Yep. Uh, do you remember that time we went to the cave and uh, the old man said, to take this, it's dangerous to go alone. And yeah, he made us take our shirts off. Yeah, he said he brought up the tripod and the camera and said, yeah, yeah you guys want to make, you good boys want to make a movie, you want to make art. And uh, yeah, so... It's, it's been uh, traumatizing in a sense, but we made it through, and we're here, and we're ready to go. Child abuse humor. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll eventually get flagged for that on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So what we're going to do today, um, as you guys know, you may have kind of realized through uh, several of our videos, um, we're kind of Spider-Man fans here, a little bit Spider-Man fans, but Mike here, Mike here so you is... You see from back there, I got a Spider-Man thing, and... I'm laying on a Spider-Man blanket that I can probably just fling aside here for now. And Spider-Man on his head. Yep, my head. I got my Clone Sagger sweatshirt on, even though it's broken and busted, but I'm going to fix it and make it a Scarlet Spider sweatshirt one day, but, you know, hey. Now, I, I'm a Spider-Man fan, but Mike, right down to his DNA, Spider-Man courses through his veins. Um, Mike has Spider-Man DNA all over his face, neck and chest. And uh, that's a little... It rolled too much. You went a little deep there, but, you know, hey. That's what she said. Oh, well, yeah, hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, Mike you just wanted to get flagged on YouTube for mature audiences. <laughs> I'm an edge lord. <laughs> uh, so anyway, what we're going to do today is Mike is going to pitch uh, his perfect Spider-Man movie. We've had uh, several different Spider-Mans. We've had uh, mm -hmm. the Tobey Maguire. Yep. Perfect John Romita, Stan Lee, Peter Parker. Yep. We've had the Andrew Garfield kind of crappy uh, Sp Peter Parker, but a great Spider-Man. He was. He was pretty funny as Spidey. Put them together. we got a great stew of mm -hmm. Spider-Man. Uh, Tom Holland plays a great uh, white Miles Morales. Yep. And uh, so what we're going to do right now, Mike, in his perfect world, Marvel Studios has said, Sp Mike, we can't figure out the Spider-Man character. We've tried numerous times. We've only had lukewarm success. Mm -hmm. We need you to take the reins and show us how it's done. So Where do I begin? Well, let's start with the cast. We'll, 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 the cast, the perfect cast for me would be Peter Parker. Okay. With the Peter Parker, I'm going to butcher your name, and you'd be able to to help me with this and get offended as I do it. I want you to go first, and then I'll correct you. John Krasinski. Very, almost, you added a Q in there. <laughs> John Krasinski, a fellow Pollock from uh, Massachusetts. See, well, from Massachusetts, I did not know that. From, of office fame. Yeah. Of, I, and Jack Ryan of Amazon Prime. Yes. Guys, guys, please. Support Amazon Prime. Jesus Christ. They're trying their best with original programming. And, they, you know, keep it up because they got cheap products coming my way, too. So uh, Netflix just raises price. So, I mean, you know, check out the old Amazon Prime. Yeah, now we don't have any more of the great stuff that was on there, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe titles, like Daredevil, et cetera, et cetera. But, hey. They're giving you less content that you want and for more money. Hmm. Anyway, back to Spider-Man the movie by Mike McCarthy. Uh, Mary Jane would be Ellie Kemper from uh, the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yes, which I have never seen an episode before, but we talked about it, and you gave me the approval for that name. She's very Stanley, Jerry Red Conway, hair, yeah. uh, Mary Jane. Yeah. Or Nikki Cox, but she's too old now for that stuff. But that's you know for another day. The window's closed yeah. now for Nikki Cox. And uh, Betty White as Aunt May, a timeless classic. Mm -hmm. Why would, why would you the fact that Marvel Marvel hasn't found a place for Betty White yet is just like they're not doing their jobs right now. I mean, forget it, Angelina Jolie, yeah. Betty White. <laughs> yeah, she can be. Who can she be? Who? As we go off topic uh, once again, Angelina Jolie. No, fuck her. <laughs> who can Betty White be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, Eternity. Eternity. Well, yes, <laughs> she could be the new Stan Lee cameos. Yeah. They almost uh, made it both too together. Soon. <laughs> I mean <laughs> that with respect because Stan if, Lee was a herald to me. If anybody could fill in the shoes by Stan, it would be uh, Betty White. Yeah, not Deadpool. Fuck him. <laughs> um, no. Deadpool. So I would have to go with the original J. Jonah Jameson, J.K. Simmons, or Hugh Laurie. I think he would have played a phenomenal. If ever there were a perfect casting, uh, J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. It's like some people are born for the role. They already have the first initial. In common, I mean, yep. I mean, it's it's destiny. And I had to go with Norman Osborn, who we all thought 
this actor would have been Norman Osborn in the newest movie, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton would have been a great Norman Osborn. Uh, I, I liked him as a vulture. I liked the vulture in Homecoming. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, when they first announced Spider-Man movies were coming out, I was like, Michael Keaton, all he can go from... They were setting the stage. And now throughout the whole movie, he was Norman Osborn. Yeah. The he goes from lovable Norman to Osborn. crazy like, like yeah. that, you know? Uh, there's a particular scene when he Peter and uh, the vulture in the car together. Oh, um, that's straight out of um, the comp. What's, what's that issue where uh, they're at the dinner party and like basically Norman like the one, the one where he, he's dragging Peter Parker from the gol- golfing ladder. Uh, so that was the cartoon yeah, that you're yeah. thinking of, but that was off of issue thirty nine forty. I think so. Yeah, so, but that that's like straight. That as soon as I saw that scene in the movie, I'm like, this is just like yeah. that scene. Where he's just goading Peter. And, yeah, and that was just a great scene from the, the, the TV show, too, the cartoon. Yeah. Um, Who else we got? Jo- uh, Harry Osborn as Joshua Jackson from Dawson the Creek's fame and Mighty Ducks, Pacey. He'll always be Pacey to me, though. Yeah, me too. Uh, I mean, I mean you, he's got, you can't go wrong. He, he's, got, he's got some money. He's, he's got Mighty Ducks money, yeah. Dawson's Creek money, Fringe money. Yeah, he's, he can just sit back and relax for yeah. the rest of that. I'm sure he is, too. Um, also to have Black Cat and Hathaway would be a great choice who might have been the original Black Cat um, yeah. just she you know she's plays a great cat cat woman you know Black Cat why not you can burglarize my uh... oh you this is for kids <laughs> alright we're trying to keep us kid friendly oh okay, but yeah this is Spider-Man is Disney now yeah half Disney yeah <laughs> um, so I, I I think that would be the dream core cast okay um, you know, symbolizing that Peter would still be working at the Daily Bugle, but he wouldn't just be taking pictures. Yeah. Um, you know, this gas money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, he'd be more of an on staff photographer. Oh yeah. Um, using gadgets to make kind of like a Spider-Man game where you're using gadgets. My favorite, like new, uh, alteration of Peter Parker or whatever you want know the saying is. Is from the game and from Renew Your Vows, mm-hmm. where he was using his technology to help take pictures of him fighting crime as Spider Man, um, and even in the game, he was using you know his technology to help him fight crime. So I'd like that to be a main aspect. I, I think a lot of people who played that game. That was kind of like, okay, this is this, this is would be a good uh, Spider Man movie yeah. right here. Is the, the, the PS4 Spider Man game? In case you guys want. I think out. ideally that could be the Spider Man movie. I think so too. Yeah, is this movie called the Perfect Spider Man movie? Is that, that the working title for the like, movie? Or I, I think that's what I wrote down in my notes that the Perfect Spider Man movie. Um, but Marvel now, Studios presents the Perfect Spider Man yeah, movie. Yeah, that's just what it's gonna be called, the Perfect Spider Man movie. Sweet, by Mike like McCarthy it. and Steve Bryce. You're setting the bar pretty high though, just so you know. I know, I know. All right. um, <laughs> I, it's just so hard to get the great greatest story down because now I'm setting myself up where, you know, I want, for me it would be, because I've said it before, and some of my favorite Spider-Man storylines, obviously the Clone Saga, and, I mean, who wouldn't be, um, and post-Clone Saga Spidey, and I think that's where I'd have the movie kind of take place. Um, Peter's in graduate school. Graduate school, kind of still paying off. You he's know. he's young, but he's seen some shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, probably late twenties, almost thirty. I would I would say. Um, what I imagine John Krasinski to be. But yeah. He, he could probably be like fifty for all I know. Yeah. <laughs> young Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I would go with the. Um, I'm gonna change my notes here. To uh, we're very we're, we're very uh, professional here on the uh, two old comics. Um, but, uh, well, being too old for comics means you, you, it starts to get a little loose in here. Yeah. You can get some stuff. So we've here. had to do many takes of this because I wasn't ready for it, but now I am. We took notes. Maybe one day we'll release it. In yeah. The B side. The important thing is, is we know our history. We do know our history yeah. though. It's just executing it. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? It's not all, you know, we did a long day. We, we work early, we get up early, but yeah, you know, here it is. Um, it'd be that Paul Jenkins storyline from the... Peter Parker Spider Man. Peter Parker Spider Man, yeah. Yep. Um, because there's two great um, Paul Jenkins um, Green Goblin storyline. One was in the spectacular Spider Man one where they re brought it back in the early 2000s or something like that. Um, and then the Peter Parker one. This one would be when instead of um, 
in the Flash one, Thompson getting kidnapped. Yeah. How? Because uh, how, I would say Harry Osborn is the Goblin right now. Yeah. He's, he's, Norman Osborn died, came back, and now he's like, okay, son, you're a Green Goblin. Yeah. Now. This here's like you know. You're, I really liked business. how Goblin Norman Osborn was uh, kind of in the background, tormenting Peter the whole time. Uh, he owns the Daily Bugle. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, I think I'd even go a further step of him instead of being. Um, <laughs> did you pass my phone? Or did you have a phone? No, I, I did have a really weird lunch today. Like I, 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 we had actually some. I had I made a roast. We had a leftover roast, and I was hungry when I get back get back from out of work, and I'm like, oh, I'll throw some peppers and onions, and and then I, I had extra home fries, and then it, anyway, you get Polish recipes here too. Yeah. So podcast. anyway, my stomach right now is like, if you, if you ever seen Mulan, you know they go to the uh, battle scene, they find yeah. the doll, and they're like, that's what my my stomach's right now. It's not like. It's, well, make sure you yeah. you spray if you go upstairs. <laughs> Don't have a blowout. Um, <laughs> um, so instead of I, I would make Norman Osborn Norman Osborn be the mayor of New York City. Oh, sweet. I like on that. On top I... of him being on top of the world, top of the greatest city in America next to Boston. You know, Boston then won, you know, New York City. So I can get all sport fans. Yeah, that better be work. Or I, I turned wife. it off. It's, it's right. her, her I mean, my phone's had too, but, you yeah, know, no, it's so on silent. Very unprofessional. I'm sure someone's going to call me in a second. I'm going to have to pick it up. But, um, but we're not very professional with this, as you can tell. Um, I like it, though. Yeah. It's pretty raw. Pretty raw, just going raw. Like like the nineties. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're both child of the nineties and eighties and you can see from the toys back here. I gotta stop I gotta stay on this. You, I know, you, I'm you, sorry. You, you know, we're, we're digressing yet I'm again. Gonna, I'm gonna look away. No, don't look away. I need to help <laughs> with my movie here. You're gonna get partial credits. That's true, okay. Twenty five percent of the uh of the pay. Twenty five percent, Jesus Christ. We'll, we'll 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 negotiate that. Okay, all right, all right. Um so now Harry Osborne is is you know the goblin, as he always was when Harry uh, Norman was dead. Um, so I would have it be where you know Peter and Harry get into a fight. They fight. Yep. And right in the beginning of the movie, um, Harry dies. Oh. This is when Harry dies. Ugh, I don't even really think about Pacey dying, but it's it, it is what it is. Um, this brings finally back together with Joey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyways, I'm more of an OC fan myself, but I'm not afraid to say that. Anyways, um, and oranges. Um, Harry dies. Harry dies. This brings Norman Osborn, like his his craziness, kind of just it snaps. You killed my son. You killed my son, and now I'm gonna ruin your life. And we all know that Peter didn't actually kill him. It was just in the fight, just like in the spectacular 200. Yep. Um, Harry Osborn dies of a drug overdose. So I know the first comic I ever cried reading. Uh, I think mine was when, um, way back when John Stern, Roger Stern, Roger Stern, thank you. Uh, oh, Kid Who Collects Spider Man. Yes, oh, yeah, that I'm was. Tear that, I mean, that's a year that later, was also so. on the Spider Man yeah. uh, cartoon show. Um, so this this brings the Norman Osborn Goblin back. Crazy Goblin. Crazy Goblin. Um. This whole time, he was still setting the stage where he still could have destroyed Peter just like that. Um, which I think all of the, the current Goblin storylines have been lacking. Um, but this is what brings Norman Osborn back as a Green Goblin. Some time goes by, you know, Norman Osborn is building his, his, uh, um, his, his plan, his revenge plan to get back at Peter. And then you just have these little misadventures. You can throw the shocker in there. Yeah. Um, the you can throw the enforcers in there. The enforcers. You can just throw like a throwaway villain in there, um, and it's just Peter living his life as Spider Man. So this, I would say, this would probably take place a few months after okay. you know, Harry Osborn dies. And well, he needs time to get a plan together. Yeah. So together and stuff. Um, Peter goes on living. You can maybe say throwing some like setting the stage for a bigger Spider Man universe. Like you said, oh, the whole. You can throw in lines like, oh, I just got me and Venom just take down Carnage again. Yeah. You, know, you throw the Maximum Carnage hints out there. Because I'm, I'm very big on having the bigger universe is what I really liked about the Amazing movies. Yeah. Is that they were setting the stage for something bigger, like a big Spider-Man they, they had the right idea. They failed miserably at it, but... G- good idea, bad execution. Um, I mean, they had Ravencroft in there, yeah. all, all the great things, which I, I thought Dr. Um, 
Ashley uh, Kafka. Kafka, which was a man in the in the movie. Yeah. I re- that that should have been then their, their um, Doc Ock in that universe. Yeah. He had the glasses down pat, the accent. He would have been perfect. Yeah. Um. See, there's my phone. <laughs> I'm very unprofessional too. Well, well. Yeah. Anyway, so we get a, a montage of, uh, of everybody, a crazy Michael Keaton mm-hmm. um, being crazy Norman Osborn, Gawking up playing against Peter Parker. What does he do next? So now he, he kidnaps Mary Jane. Um, and this, this sets on a whole stage of Peter. I would even like have the craziness of Norman Osborn leaving pumpkin bombs all over the place, um, kind of to like throw him off and whatnot. It's just set the stage, like these elaborate traps that Peter eventually gets through. But like, I, I, I'm as picturing as a complete 90s comic book in my head right now. Question, as producer of this movie, uh, do we get the broomstick? That's debatable, but we'll... Ah, <laughs> uh, no. You're, you're on the casting couch either yeah. way, my friend. Yeah. But <laughs> do we get the broomstick uh, Green Goblin? No, no, no. Yeah. We're, we're going to go with the, the wings. Okay, on, on okay. The, the Goblin Glider. Um, just, I, I, I didn't understand... Comic books, it's comic books, whatever. We're going to talk about that during production because I'm a fan of the... Uh, how, I don't know guy. how he was able to stay on that. We, we, we can do both. We can start off the broomstick. Yeah. Or maybe he can take it just as an Easter egg. You can take yeah. it out and be like, what? Yeah. no. It can be in the background. Yeah. You know. They can do like, the whole closet thing where he's taking out gliders and all, all yeah. the things are falling out of closet and the broom one comes out. We'll do that. I'll give you that one. Okay. All right. Um, so, it's a whole story where, you know, obviously Norman Osborn is going to pull down a, a freaking... Holding a Jack Daniels down at Mary Jane's throat. Is he? Well, well, you might want to throw someone else down. Stop it! I don't think the Me Too movement is that that would be a smart idea. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we do that. Can't get away with anything. Reese Witherspoon will have yeah. her ass. Yeah. And Mary and uh, Mary Jane will get paid more. You know, <laughs> um, or at least the same amount. Same amount. Yeah. Um, and you just have a crazy fight where Peter Parker gets some mass and they're like they're fighting in the warehouse. Yeah. I'm kinda of going on also to that the spectacular storyline where um Nomi carries Nomi Osborne. He gets the stuff in his eyes yeah, yeah. like that and all that stuff. Full on like, fight in the in a warehouse. Drag out like almost to the death fight. Yeah. Um I wouldn't have any of that the laughing stuff that they had in the in the in the story. Oh the line. joke at the end where yeah. he talks about like how he wanted to call himself Mr. Coffee or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, full That's, I think fight that was Jenkins' death. British humor. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say full fight to death because Norman Osborn won't die in this because obviously he can't die. No. We both know from both yeah. Ultimate and 616. You're paying for Michael Keaton. You want to milk that cow yeah. for all it's worth. Um, and then you have the end fight where um, Mary Jane's still alive. Um, and then maybe that's when we can find out that she's pregnant. Okay, cool. I like that. Um and then we can set the stage for, like, um, at the end, because we have end credits now, like, up the yin yang. That's what we want now. Where Norman Osborn's in jail, and he's going to set the stage for, to create his own Sinister Six. Okay. Because um, you don't, well, the great thing about all these new movies is you don't need to do these origin stories anymore. No. You can have a whole Spider Man universe just sitting in the pocket. It's called Google, guys. Yeah, Let's figure it out. Just do some work yourself. Ravencroft. Yeah. Or Strikers Island. Um, uh, what was the one that was off the coast of? Uh, the raft. The raft. Yes, yeah. that's yes. But that was in a uh, Civil War, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, but that that's been a mainstay in the Spider-Man universe as well as it's the true. Marvel universe forever. So, um, and I would have him set the stage for Norman Osborn creating his own Sinister Six, um, and now set up future sequels. And I would also have, on the side, and my biggest thing is, I, I, if I were to do this, Peter Parker wouldn't die. No. I would set the stage for Miles Morales to show up in it. Okay. Just like the video game. Um, because then you can set up a whole new Spider-Man uh, universe after this. Like Miles could work in the Daily Bugle or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Um, I I I I have to think back. I don't think I would really make Peter be in the Daily Bugle anymore. Okay. Um, he could be visiting people. Like, he like, could be visiting people. You have it there. You still have it there. Um, you know, maybe it's something you can do part time. But his main job would be something like at Horizons, where he's using his smarts. Yeah. Because uh, I, I thought that was one of my best favorite things of Dan Slott. People from the Bugle could be interviewing him at Horizon because he's like he's like yeah. you know, something cool or whatever. 
Um, well, they can do the, like the when uh, they can do like a party at the at the uh, Daily Bugle, kind of like in the Return of Norman Osborn, the Clone Saga type thing, something yeah. like that. We had something to, to draw him back in there. Yeah, sweet. Um, so I think setting up a whole universe without doing a retelling of the origin yet again, which I think whole comedy great about. Um, and with great power comes great responsibility. We'll begin that movie. You're not going to say when you have power and you don't do the thing, then and something happens bad, then you're responsible for the thing? No, though I didn't mind that in uh, Homecoming, but it was in... Uh, Tom Holland sold it. Yeah. Him and Robert Downey Jr. have a great... Yeah, but in the, um, in the Amazing Garfield movies, Spider-Man movies, he, Martin Sheen played a hell of a Norman, uh, Uncle Ben, but... Just say great power comes with great responsibility. We're not going to be upset as Spider-Man fans. You know, I know you meant the Andrew Garfield making Spider-Man movies, but you said Amazing Garfield. Now I want an Amazing Garfield movie. That will we do next. <laughs> I, I, I've missed my words, you know I mean? <laughs> I like it, though. I, See, you were coming up with all these great ideas, though, just based on, like, you it know... It's just like... feeling out. We have all these knowledge <laughs> and history in our head. And I, I'm not afraid to say I did like the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I mean, uh, I, like they I, just weren't great. Like we said before, they, they good ideas, bad execution. In my my my, uh, which I, I think mean, was the producers and and the executive at the Sony that one that kind of that did that. I think Mark Webb had no interest in doing another Spider-Man movie besides the first one. That could be true too. It also, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I like, like I said, I think Andrew Garfield did a great Spider-Man. Bad mm-hmm. Peter Parker. I think I don't know. It, it's me. And there's a lot of di- like nighttime. I don't like nighttime Spider-Man. Um, it, to me, it just seemed a little too of its time, a little like too... I, I did like how they were trying to focus on... When he said it best, I like to think that he inspires hope. Yeah. I did get that vibe from that movie. Oh, there's some good... There's definitely there's, there's that scene where like the kid, uh, they break a science project, whatever, and he helps them Oh, out. that was awesome. And then the part at the end, there's some great scenes in that. I mean, Even at the end of the Rhino thing, that like inspired, dangerously inspired someone to rest their life to protect people oh, as Spider-Man. All talented people. It, yeah. you, just get, uh, it, you just get all mixed up with the, the Jimmy Fox playing like the, the Schumacher Riddler Electro. Yeah, so that's the biggest kind of problem. I'm going to say this right now. With our movie, our our villains aren't going to be victims. You know, we start off with the Tobey Maguire movie where you can kind of get away with Norman Osborn being a victim of his own success and his own sustaining because they kind of they kind of touched upon that in some of the, the goblin storylines of the past but doc ock not a victim he's a sociopath he he thinks he's better than everyone else he kind of got that vibe a little bit but he was i understand that they re that kind of the thing was started, origin in the late 80s 90s they started to kind of dissect and villains and kind of like make you want to like sympathize with them I, some some of them we can do that with, yeah. i mean but i mean not a, a lot of them we can't do that. doc ock was never a victim he was never a nice person no um, years and years of trauma from his father beating him up and his mom being no too protective and him thinking he's better than everyone else. Um, and Electro, he was never, he was always an asshole. His first thing was like, some guy got, you know, was on the, uh, he's a line pullman, you know, fixing the lines, like, you know, cable guy type thing, you know, yep. electricity, con ed, or con ed, I'm really dating myself on that one. Um, National Grid Pullman. Um, Pullman. Well, you, you you need to get your mind out of the gutter. You're, making you, me go you're, down you're setting him up, and I just want to knock him down. Um, <laughs> I just vast Spider-Man knowledge in my head. This guy's on the pole. Another, you know, guy's on the pole. Gets struck by lightning, or he he falls off, and the the manager goes to uh, Max Dillon. Get up there, you're my best guy. God, get up there and get him down. It's like not unless you fucking pay me to go up there and do it. And he's like, fine, whatever. Here's your money. Go up and get him. And he goes and saves him. But he's a, he's a little jerk the whole way. Stop overthinking it, Hollywood act- Hollywood actors. Yeah, yeah, just... You don't need to make these guys victims. Sometimes the bad guy's the bad guy. Yeah. I mean, people crap on uh, Michael Bay all the time. But sometimes just being a simple slam-bam-boom, like, you know... Listen, figure, I will like, fight anyone who disagrees with me on how... Except yourself, because you're still handsome. But uh, on the Transformers movie, I love, not the last two ones, but I love the first three Transformers movies. They were phenomenal. I've never not been entertained by a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> People who question it, like, oh, it's done. Never... It's not. It's, it's robots beating up. I almost cried in the second one. What do you want? When you know? he's when when Optimus Prime is in the forest, he's, he's trying to get Sam to safety. God bless uh, Shia LaBeouf. He's, he's an angel. And... 
He's taken on three Decepticons at once, and he says, "I'll take you all on." I almost cried. Like, why did this movie win an Oscar? Whenever, Phenomenal. Whenever we the word Bumblebee gets mentioned in conversation with in my family, with my wife, my kids, we, we, we can never just say a Bumblebee. We just have to go Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> Because of Shia LaBeouf. Oh, right? Shia LaBeouf. I hope that you... We should tag, somehow tag him in this. Shia LaBeouf, he would be in the Marvel Universe, too. Shia LaBeouf, I love you. I think you're a phenomenal actor. Uh, Holes, one of my favorite movies. Steven Spielberg called him the, the next Tom Hanks. Yeah. Uh, then he went a little crazy. <laughs> but I'll, I'll I don't think you're crazy, back. Shia LaBeouf. And we're going to tag him in this. And hope that you can... <laughs> clap in it like he did in that... Oh, my God. A great song. So that's your Spider-Man movie? Yeah, I think that is. Uh, you, yeah. Set up a bigger universe. I would still have it set in the Marvel, well, in a Marvel cinematic universe. Okay. Meaning like... So is this the Sony universe or is this the Marvel universe? I would have set it in the Marvel universe. Okay. A Marvel universe. Not Honestly, it can't be in the Marvel cinematic universe. Yeah. But set in the Marvel universe. Meaning there is a Captain America, there's the Avengers, but it's almost like it's an amazing Spider-Man book. I could picture a movie... In current, day. would you mind if I pitch a real quick? Go for it. A real quick, and I, I know you're probably going to disagree with 90% of these uh, casting choices. I'm going to have At the Far From Home. I don't like it. Like, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> At the Far From Home, we come back. I don't know what the title of the movie's going to be, but we're going to keep Tom Holland only yep. because, um, like, I, 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 he is a white Miles Morales, but mm -hmm. I, I do like Tom Holland. And I thing, think he's a great Spider Man. He's a great Spider Man. Um, he, he's good Peter and um, a good Spider Man. Stop it right there. I don't know so much about Tobey Maguire. I love Tobey Maguire. But both Andrew and Garfield, Garfield and uh, Tom Holland both have love for the character, though. Oh, they, oh, they all so do. That, yeah. I, that's what I love about it. Um, I would keep Tom Holland. I would keep the cast, only because I like the cast. Mm -hmm. This is the first time since the comics I can actually think that, I, I, that the cast is very likable. I love. I didn't like the, the Flash actor. Thompson? Yeah, at first. Love but he, I Thompson. love him now. <laughs> it's great. Hey, he, Phoenix Parker. Yeah, he's he's like like the thing is like when we were kids. They were those cut through bullies, like the one, the Amazing Spider-Man mm -hmm. ones, and even the uh, Raimi ones. Those got I mean now the, the, the Flash Thompson, the Homecoming movie. That's more of like the bullies my kids deal with anyway. I think I kind of wish he was still a football star though. Yeah, you can do that. You I mean, can still keep him. Maybe he does play football. Maybe yeah. I haven't seen him play football. Um, I do like uh, Zendaya as uh, MJ. Yeah. I like her. I like uh, not Ganky. Um, so I like that whole cast. What I would yeah. do is I would introduce um, the Bugle in some form. I, this is the casting I know you're not going to like. Uh, I wouldn't have J.K. Simmons come back only because mm -hmm. he's associated with the other movie. And yeah. No, that's fine. Movie. I just think he's just he's perfect for it. Hear me out. Ice Cube as J. Jonah Jameson. I saw that uh, somewhere on Facebook that someone cast him as... Have as... you ever seen 21 Jump Street? The yes, movie? it's phenomenal. If you see 21 Jump Street, you can even get uh, the, the, the writers and directors who did Into the Spider-Verse do this movie. Yeah. Um, he, he'd be a great Jameson. Which I think is one of the best Spider-Man movies. Oh, yeah. Better than Spider-Man 2. And that's hard to be Spider-Man 2. <laughs> I would um, set up... I said is the, the the villains I've been waiting for my entire life would be the Spider-Slayers. I would mm -hmm. have Spencer Smythe played by Nicolas Cage. Um, he would um, be hired by somebody <laughs> to... I just hate Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage. He's Spencer Smythe. He's creating the Spider-Slayers. His son, Alistair Smythe, who is played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt in a wheelchair. So we have... Um, oh, yes, because originally he was in the wheelchair. Yeah. In, Wait, was he originally in the wheelchair in the comic book, which I don't remember? Or I was he, it the 90s cartoon? He had some kind of disability, I think, in the... Uh, uh -huh. in the but um, then he had, he had so many different kind of... Because that, that was early on in Amazing, that 100s. Yeah. 101, 102. So I'm, I'm not going to have Jameson involved into the uh, Spider Slayers. I'm going to have him hired by some unknown benefactor. Mm -hmm. Um, he goes up to Spider-Man, we get the big robots, we actually get him breaking out Gargan from the first movie in Homecoming, he comes, becomes a scorpion, I'm not going to introduce the fly, because I like to say the fly for a different, maybe, maybe he can be a little like side android thing, whatever. The fly? The fly, remember the fly from, uh... I remember, I don't remember him being in the movie though, the actor. Like, no, he's not in the movie, I, 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 would put so. him, I would maybe put a cameo as a fly, yeah. because he is a spider slayer. So I would have um, the, the robot spider slayers, scorpion leading that, obviously scorpion fails, mm -hmm. obviously the robot gets destroyed. Spencer Smythe's uh, Al Spencer Smythe turns his son Alistair Smythe into like the whole the hybrid the awesome Spider Slayer the awesome thing. with the big like things mm -hmm. that shoot lasers and stuff. Um, he gets defeated, um, but no, not before Spencer Smythe gets killed, and Alistair Smythe obviously blames like you know actually you know what we'll have it out before he gets his father won't turn him into uh, the the cyborg thing. We'll have 
his father died, then he turns himself into the yeah, Cyborg yeah. thing. Anyway, we do all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that big ass Professor X uh, wheelchair yeah. thing too. So anyway, spat, smash, boom, explosions, robots, all that stuff. By the end of the movie, we have Alistair Smythe all broken. He has no more resources, and so the benefactor comes up to comes up to him out of the shadows and tells him like, you know, hey, um, like you have some talents. Like I think I can use you. And it's Norman Osborn, and it's played by Johnny Depp. And that's my Spider-Man movie. And end credit scene. <laughs> You could get away. Uh, I don't know how I feel about Johnny Depp. I, I I agree with all of your other castings, but I, I don't know if I can get behind the Johnny Depp. And not and not in a negative yep. way. I just I don't see him as. I think Johnny Depp needs he needs to be brushed off and he needs to be remolded. He needs to get out of that those Tim Burton movies. He needs to like get out of those pirate movies. Yeah. He just needs to play like a something he's never played. He before. will own the role though. He will. He'll be Norman Osborn. Yeah. Like. Walking down the street, and just imagine him like you know, like you know, he had that the haircut too on him. He can if he wanted. We you know. do, we can do what we want with him. He's Johnny Depp. He's a chameleon. So that's that's my Spider-Man movie. Yeah, you could also introduce a young Harry Osborn too. Yeah, I yeah, Harry Harry Osborn. See that I think the biggest problem with the um, the Spider-Man movies is all everyone's afraid to recast like another Harry Osborn, another Norman Osborn. As Spider-Man fans, I would love to see Norman Osborn done one hundred percent right. Yeah, I, um, I, to be honest with you, I think the Michael Keaton would be. I, I didn't cast Michael Keaton in mind because he was already the Vulture. Mm. Him, I think he'd be the perfect, perfect Norman Osborn. He's got hair, hair and everything. William Defoe uh, did a fine job as Osborn, but I feel like with all the CGI of making Peter Parker a scrawny nerd, they kind of could have done that with. Norman Osborn being fat and out of shape, and then they kind of like get strong and muscular again. The Goblin formula and stuff, yeah. Um, because it just it it, it showed him getting bigger on the, the on the computer screens, but he didn't actually get bigger. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. But I I suit wise, would you do? Would you make an Ultimate Green Goblin style Hulk type character, or would you make it be more of a as a Power Ranger suit, as I call it back then? Um, no, I do, I kind of a mixture of both. I, I do, um, I, I want that purple and green suit. Mm -hmm. I kind of modify, I don't know how, I, what, what kind of art style I do. You have to for. do some type of armor. But... You know, yeah, you do, well, you know what I would do? I would do, I don't know if you guys ever saw the um, game Ultimate Alliance 2. They do a great um, version of that costume in that game where it's like the, the it's not the scales mm -hmm. and the, the skin are like mostly armor, but the face is kind of like, it's a, it's a mask, but also kind of like a, a I don't know. It's it's, like, it's kind of like that test footage of Willem Dafoe for the Spider-Man movies. Yeah. I, I would try to do more, more motion cap for the face and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I think that a helmet looks goofy. Yeah. And I think just like... Part... I mean, I understand what they were doing. They were trying to make it make sense. Yeah. That's the thing that they do with a lot of the movies to make it make sense. It's a comic book movie, guys. Yeah. You can't make your sense. <laughs> you know what? Sense. If you could do an entire movie with a 30-year-old Samuel L. Jackson... Then I think we have the technology now to do a, a Green Goblin yeah. face without prosthetics. Yeah, I mean, come on. No. Um, I think we need to tag Marvel in this somehow, so that we can they can hire us to do the new movie. Kevin Feige clearly doesn't know what he's doing, as evidence to all. These, well, I these think Marvel the biggest problem bombs, is you know Marvel bombs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I thought you <laughs> we'll edit that part off. We do want Marvel to call us. But... No, no, no. I, I meant like you think that. Whatever. That was a joke. It obviously, didn't land. It over my head. <laughs> um, I think that was the biggest mistake in previous movies is they get some Hollywood writer who doesn't really know that much about Spider-Man. And as much as we love the Tobey Maguire movies and, you know, we don't have the greatest amount of love for the Garfield movies, but we like them. It seems like it was more of a Hollywood Spider-Man movie. Which one? The special. I felt the Tobey Maguire movie, especially now that I rewatch them, that they were more of the Hollywood production Spider-Man movies. Oh yeah, they don't hold up, but, but I mean, they they were a product of their times for special effects and all that go. But it's definitely, it's definitely an homage to the uh, Lee Romita yeah, comic yeah. books. It's 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 an homage to the comic book for sure. Oh yeah, you know, so yeah, I think that's what we would uh do for our movies spider-man movies so that's that's the per working title bear with us the perfect spider-man movie yeah um put in the comments whether you think it's a cool idea whether you think it's uh lame 
You think you can come up with a better idea? Let us know. Uh, but either way, make sure you like and subscribe yes, to our channel. We need more people to like and subscribe to us so we can get better quantity and better, you know, I mean, this my... You got the quality, quantity. The now game you room the quality, you know? looks phenomenal. And um, I'm still working on the... Uh, I know I keep saying this, but they sent my DVR recorder to the wrong house. So I'm still waiting for that. You know what? That. Don't support Amazon Prime. I got it from eBay, so... On, support Amazon Prime. Don't support eBay. So that's uh, going to do it for us yeah, today. Yeah, for now, yeah. Uh, yeah. See you guys next time. See you later.